So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video, and it's been about a week now since Apple released their 14.5 Beta 1, and then even after that, two days later, they released like a V2 of Beta 1. They didn't call it Beta 2, they just kept it as Beta 1 with a different build number. So what I want to discuss today is kind of give you guys my follow-up video on how 14.1 has been treating me, at least the V2 version, talk about battery life, and maybe some new features that I found along the way as well. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So to get started, I did want to show off that new build number. So if we go into general, go into about, hit that 14.5 button, you now see that we're on a different build number than we were with that V1 version. So this is 18E5140K before we had J ending it. So we are getting closer and I don't really understand why Apple didn't call this a beta 2. Maybe it was such a small and insignificant change that they didn't recognize it as a beta 2, but at the same time, if it was if it wasn't that important, then they would have waited a little bit longer to update it because they updated it within 48 hours. So keep that in mind with 15, with 14.5 beta one V2. And then another thing I did want to show you is that we did get a new software update kind of icon on here. So whenever you check to see if there are any software updates available and there aren't, you now get this green check mark. It lets you know what iPad OS software you're on. And then it lets you know the last time you actually checked that software. And now there's a whole new interface when it comes to typing to Siri. And the way you activate it, because some people have questions on how to activate it, you go into settings, go down to accessibility, go all the way down to Siri, and then toggle that type to Siri setting on. That will allow you to then type to Siri. Now, some people have asked why you would want to use type to Siri when Siri is a voice assistant. But again, accessibility is there to have these functions for not the normal use cases, right? Accessibility is there to make you work around for certain situations. And you never know the situations that people are in. So if somebody needs to type to Siri, that is available through accessibility. And then another one that I saw was actually in screen time. And I don't know if this is a new feature or something that has been there for a while, but I've never seen this always allowed option. Or maybe they renamed it because I knew that you can restrict you know, who can reach out to you based on if you put on yourself, if you put do not disturb on yourself and if you limit screen time on certain applications. But I always thought that was in the communications limit. But now it says this is a different section that allows context. So limit who can communicate with you during downtime. Limits apply to phone, FaceTime messages and iCloud contact. So it's a little bit more Apple native specific, but then you can also add more third party apps. So I didn't know if maybe this was in another section of general or another section of the settings option, but this is here and let me know if you guys have seen this, seen this before. Another one that you can do now is actually with Siri as well, which I can't showcase right now because I don't have Find My turned on with this guy. But basically you can now use Siri to ask for somebody's location. So you can say, hey blank, where is Fernando Silva? And it'll show you in the Siri UI where that person is. And then the last thing I did want to touch on was actually look at the screen time and the battery life. So if we go into the battery section just to get an idea of what we're looking at, right? So. The last 10 days, we're looking at about 5 hours and 37 minutes of screen on time. And then in the last 24 hours, we're actually at 8 hours and 22 minutes. And you can see that I did kill the battery at one point all day yesterday and it quickly charged back. So charging the iPad up is actually a very quick process. And this is again, plugged in through the magic keyboard. So it's not even directly plugged in where I can get up to 30 watts. This only I think pushes through about 20 or 21 watts of power, which is fast enough for something like this. So again, last 10 days, about five hours and 37 minutes, but we're looking at a little bit more now, around eight hours in terms of screen on time overall. And overall battery life has been doable it's, and it's gotten a little bit better since that Thursday release of that V2 version of the software. But again, it's just something to keep taking a look at and remember that I have the 2018 model. So it's almost three years old at this point and that's a three year old battery. So I'm not on the same level as a 2020 iPad Pros, the 2020 iPad Air, things along those lines. But that's gonna do it for this view. Let's go back to the normal view. So overall 14.5 beta one V2, I know it's a mouthful now, but so far it's been pretty good. I have very little complaints. Battery life has got a little bit better. Again, the uptake is not that, not that great, but I'll take whatever I can get from a battery life performance standpoint. There was one glitch that I kept getting, but I haven't been able to recreate it. It's basically the accelerometer getting all messed up. And whenever I slap the iPad down on the magic keyboard, sometimes it'll be in landscape mode, but upside down. And that's happened to be two or three times. And all I have to do is take it off kind of move it around physically and then it fixes itself. I don't have to like turn off the iPad or do anything like that, but that's the one kind of glitch or issue or bug that I've personally dealt with. So if you're a public developer, it is available for you. So go ahead and give it a download. Cause like I said, it does improve battery life a little bit and I'll take any battery life performance upgrade at any point. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike for always keeping us protected and giving us that nice feel whenever we're handwriting on the iPad Pro. 
and it helps support the channel with every purchase. It's going to be first link in the description below. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace. Also, stay subscribed because we got some uh, giveaways coming soon.